In 1890, William James of Harvard, creator of American academic psychology as a science, wrote, I'm quoting from psychology, habit alone is what saves the children of fortune from the envious uprisings of the poor. Habits of deference, habits of suggestibility, habits of regarding people in the same boat as yourself as competitors. Shortly after James wrote that, our institutional schooling was set into motion for the very first time fashioned by the children of fortune to teach habits to the envious poor. Track the leadership mind through recent history and you will see that William James was only echoing the attitudes of his class. Winston Churchill, for instance, not Saddam Hussein, was the first person ever to order poison gas use from the air against the civilian population. He did that to the Kurds in what eventually became Iraq. And stung by criticism of this murderous decision, Churchill defended himself with these words in 1918. I'm quoting, I don't understand squeamishness about the use of gas. I am strongly in favor of using poison gas against uncivilized tribes. It's a shame he didn't mean the English. <laughs> Female leaders, given a chance, have shown a similar disdain for the unfortunate. Victoria Woodhull, not Hillary Clinton, was the first American woman to testify in front of Congress, the first female stockbroker, and the first lady to publish a newspaper. In 1872, she officially ran for the American presidency. And in her book, The Rapid Multiplication of the Unfit, which is still in print, by the way. She warned against the incurable biological depravity of the poor. What kind of schools that Mrs. Woodhull or William James or Winston Churchill would have signed off on, I don't need to leave to your imagination since they are all around you.